So when we are editing, me and the net, uh, who is part of the show as well, uh, this is my editing station right here. We're in the tiny house, which is where we lived for five years. You remember that? Not the five not, years. Not really. She was a baby most of the time. We had an ERV that ran all the time. And the ERV is right now being serviced. I'm about to show you what is being done on it. And I just want to show you why this kind of thing is important, especially in a small space. We have windows that I can open, and that's the one that I open right there when I'm working in here generally. But on days when it is raining outside, which today was one of those days, opening the window becomes kind of a liability because we not only have liquid water coming in through the opening, but we also have a lot of humidity coming in. Also, of course, we're monitoring and the carbon dioxide, if we don't open the window, becomes totally not healthy. Um, and this, we're not so much worried about the carbon dioxide as we're worried about all the things that come with it which of course includes our skin flakes and the gases that are coming out of us. We're off-gassing ammonia and formaldehyde and stuff like that into the space, all kinds of weird things. Mm. Uh, in addition to body odor and Fart. farts. Fart gas? Fart gas. So in the mechanical closet, in the front of the tiny house, this is a buffer space. Buffer spaces are like outside in every way, except no animals, precipitation, or wind. The way that we look at enclosures, you should have every room in your house be either totally inside, totally outside. This is a totally outside space, but it is protected. We've got a little heater in here to make sure that our plumbing doesn't freeze, and that's hooked to an automatic um, switch that temp monitors the temperature. Uh, this is the brand new core that we're gonna be putting into this ERV. ERV has a paper or a composite core. An HRV has a metal or a plastic core. You can see the gasket here that's gonna provide air tightness all over the thing, and it's got instructions on it. This uh, is the old core. You can see that it's showing its age. So this is like corrosion from moisture. You can see some, uh, this is just part of the door that wore off basically on it. But this is signs of condensation. Now what I wanna show you is this is the outgoing air. This is stale air coming through and going to outside. This is fresh air coming in and going to inside. Mm. And this is where we have the issue. Cold and also the humidity. Both of those spikes are gonna hit right here first. And so yes, this growth might be an issue for you. And what you wanna do is just take a, take a whiff. And if that smells like something that you want the inside of your house to smell like, then great. Uh, the problem that caused this is not the nature of an ERV. The problem is that I installed this in the wrong place. This is in an outside cabinet. This would be the same as if you were installing the CRV in your attic or in your unconditioned crawl space. So this will happen when you have the ERV located in an unconditioned space. So don't do that do it like it we did in our house and have it this be inside. So the simple solution to this is we're gonna replace this core with the fresh core and it simply slides right in. And then the door goes on top of that. We make sure that you uh, latch the door and then also in this case, this is an older brone and so it gets screwed uh, in place because there, there weren't latches when this came out. I still prefer this ERV over any other one that would be on the market right now because this is a 70 CFM max unit. Uh, it's not an electronically commutated motor, an ECM unit, uh, which would mean that it's infinitely variable and that you can dial up and down. This one, you just kind of choke down the dampers on it, which is what we do. It's not as energy efficient, but also I'm running this on the lowest uh, flow possible so that I can have my house not be breathing more than once per hour, which is what we do with this house. When this thing is on, it's replacing all the air in the house once per hour, even at 30 CFM. So any other ERV is gonna be much bigger than this. And it's not gonna be like the configuration of this was we were really limited by the space constraints. By the way, off topic from ventilation, but this is what happens when you don't have eaves on your freaking house, okay? Like that's water that's coming through the doorknob because we don't have eaves and like gross. So just, if you have the chance to put eaves, this thing is built to go on the highway. Just so eaves eave. would have torn off a long time ago. But anyway, like this is what you're getting if you build one of these modern houses without eaves is you just constantly have water trying desperately to get in. Ew, it's not gross. worth it. 
So now that this is done, we can have the air inside the tiny house be constantly regulated. And the last piece of this puzzle would be this. This is called the Brone Smart Plug. So I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna plug the ERV into this, and then this will communicate with the uh, indoor air quality monitor on the inside of the house. And that will then say, hey, it's starting to be a little stale in here because that's a better scenario for this tiny house because we don't use it every day. Back when we lived in this every single day, keeping the thing running 24 hours a day when we had a, we were taking showers in there, we were using the bathroom in there. Right now, we don't take showers in there. In fact, there's no water even in the water bag because I need to do more work on the, the house. And the toilet, for a composting toilet, if you wanna see a whole video about what composting toilets are about, uh, ours is actually taken completely out of the house because if you let it sit dry for too long, you get these fungus flies showing up and they're gross. So, um, this is gonna be useful because then it will just run the ventilation when we need to run the ventilation. It'll be able to tell when there's a person in there because the VOCs, the CO2 will spike. Um, and then at all other times, it will not flood the house with humidity, which would then make the dehumidifier run longer, etc. Maintain your systems. You gotta check those filters. You gotta replace the filters when they get super filthy. Uh, you gotta wash them at the very least. You gotta replace your core. You gotta remember that someday this machine's gonna die and you're gonna have to replace it with something else. And at that point, we're kind of screwed because I don't know what else is gonna be the perfect shape to fit in here. So anyway, uh, do better than we did on configuring this thing when you're doing one in a real house. That's one of the problems with tiny houses. Hope you comment below if you have anything else to add about ERVs in general. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.